Thank you for joining us today for LeapPoint and Adobe's 2022 Digital Marketing State of Technology webinar. Earlier this year, Adobe and LeapPoint conducted a survey to discover the priorities, challenges, and initiatives facing senior level marketing executives. Respondents included representation across industries with a focus on healthcare, financial services, retail, and travel and hospitality. The results are in and we're excited to share these insights with you today, including perspectives, strategies, and experiences from the LeapPoint and Adobe presenters joining us. We will be taking questions live, so please use the Q&A submission window to submit your questions, and we will address those in real time or at the conclusion of the presentation. Now I would like to hand it over to Nick Benedetto, CEO of LeapPoint, who will introduce today's presenters and guide us through the results and key findings. Nick, the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Paul. And thank you to everybody for joining today. My name is Nick Benedetto, the CEO of LeapPoint. And for years, we've had the privilege of working with Adobe. And today we have Daniel Hayden from Adobe joining us. Daniel is a transformation director within their digital strategy group. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Daniel for the last five years. He's terrific. And throughout today's session, he's gonna add a ton of color around how he's helping customers climb through the maturity curve in relation to the insights that you're seeing. Also terrific, I have Jen Krempa with me. She is LeapPoint's head of global delivery. Uh, Jen will be walking you through and doing a deep dive on the insights, and she'll be correlating it to the work that we're doing today for our customer base and the roadmaps that we're already starting to plan for 2023. Daniel, Jen, should we jump in? Definitely. Great. So, um, so I thought what was really interesting as we looked at the insights is that <clears throat> there, it's a universal truth across all of the industries with the number one driving opportunity being the customer journey and digital experience. Although it's interesting that it's consistent across the industries, I'm not really surprised. When you think about the last few years in the pandemic, a lot of companies have really upped their game when it comes to customer journey. You've seen that, whether it's uh, mobile ordering or mobile pickup or safety procedures when traveling, um, the bar has been set much higher by a number of companies. In fact, earlier this week, I attended the Gartner 2022 State of Marketing. And one of the interesting pieces they said in relation to the customer journey and orchestrating it is that it was a must for organizations to drive a strategic advantage. So we've got some great consistency there with uh, the number one opportunity um, across industries and also aligned with what Gartner is seeing. But this is not easy to achieve. We're talking about omni-channel. We're talking about multiple profiles that we need to unify. We're talking about multiple marketing systems. We're talking about numerous functions within the organization that need to come together to really make a, a powerful customer journey and digital experience happen. And it's not easy. And so when we look at where the investments are uh, coming out of the survey, they're very heavily focused on integrating that technology, um, establishing the investment strategy, and also aligning that with the work management and analytics to build the best customer journey. And so it's a cohesive technology and partner imperative of bringing the strategy, the technology, integrating it effectively to develop a really ease of use customer journey. So if we dive into that a little bit more and we look at the growth opportunities, we've already previewed for you that number one was improving the customer journey and digital experience. But at a really close second was an operational focused digital transformation. Um, both of these are very important growth opportunities and both are highly correlated. Um, in fact, the operation focused digital transformation is an enabler for the customer customer journey. Our mission is purely focused on connected work for driving powerful experiences. That ties these two growth opportunities coincidentally together. And I want to take a moment to explain that to you. The way we look at the world is we need to develop these powerful journeys and powerful customer experiences. But if we don't look at the operations and employee focused experience as well, we're doing a disservice to ourselves. So in fact, we often look there first. And what we mean by that is we look at the employee experience of connecting the work, connecting and integrating the technology and aligning it with strategy in a way that creates a great digital foundation that is highly collaborative and highly efficient to accelerate their digital work. 
And the reason there is when that happens and when that occurs, your employees are now focused on doing their best work. The majority of their day is focused on the things that they love to do and that they do best. And that translates into creating beautiful and powerful customer experiences and journeys. So both of these together are great growth opportunities, highly tied together. Yeah, Nick, just to add, um, you know, from an Adobe perspective, I can't agree with you more. Uh, delivering personalized experiences really shows that brands can empathize with what their customers really want and really need. And, and that's an opportunity to build trust. Uh, what's interesting in some of our studies, we found that less than half of the marketing content that's being produced right now from brands is really being personalized. So there's a huge opportunity there. Uh, as we all know, content is still king and uh, personalized content really inspires that trust. And so consumers, including myself, we want to put our money where, where the trust actually is. And so it's, it's a great opportunity for us, uh, for both an in-person and digital experience to kind of build that trust and ultimately equally important uh, to kind of identify some new audiences. That's great, Daniel. I love that you said trust in relation to personalization, because I always try to think about it as just a conversation with someone. And when you think about a conversation with someone, the best conversations are those that you're sharing good information, you're receiving good information back. It's a trusted conversation. So very much like personalization. So thanks for adding that. Definitely. Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into those growth opportunities a little bit more, and I'm going to pass it to Jen Krempa. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nick. So what I think is really, really exciting about this survey, this survey data, what the findings um, and insights that we have today is that one of the trends you're going to see throughout this presentation is the focus on data, right? What data do we have? What are the analytics and insights? And it's always so nice to have this insight from a holistic how we work perspective to be oh my gosh, we're not alone. These challenges that we face every day that many of you who are watching this right now, that, that your daily life looks like, that that is shared by counterparts and peers and, and in companies across different industries um, and really helps to set and kind of gauge where you are as you're going through your daily work in terms of in terms of how you're aligning as an organization um, and where you have similarities and differences and what you see as those challenges and obstacles within, within your work. So Diving right into that, so what Nick outlined was really what we heard and what we found from the survey as those top imperatives for growth, right? What people are really focused on needing to do and transform from a marketing perspective. We also wanted to understand the top challenges and obstacles, right? So this image that you're seeing on the screen right now might look very familiar. <laughs> This might feel like what your work like today, right? There are different teams that, that are working together that are sometimes siloed, that have connection points across the organization with different processes, different data, different systems that are trying to make sense of the ecosystem that at its best is perhaps disjointed, right? Um, to answer questions that range from the operational, you know, like, are we like, what are we working on? Are we going to hit these deadlines to more strategic? Are we having the impact that we want to, to even the more, um, the more theoretical, the more, the more existential, if, if you, if we, if we even want to say that around, does my work even matter? Is what I'm doing making a difference, right? We, we are working, we are working with a client right now as we were digging into this with creative teams, the number one thing we heard back from them um, was that they wanted data. They wanted to see how their assets, how the content they were created were performing because they wanted to be able to answer, does my work matter? Am I doing this effectively? How do I get better? These are fundamental questions that tie back to the why of the work that's being done within our organizations to ultimately build that trust, like Daniel said. Um, and so these were very common themes that, that we hear um, around these challenges and obstacles. But before we dive into these a little bit more, Daniel, do any, would you echo that? Is this really what you're seeing too as you're in organizations and working with them from a strategic perspective? Yeah, absolutely. And, and my favorite, just like you, I think, is that top one, does my work even matter? We're really finding three main areas that uh, employees uh, are really focusing on. And, and this has only been emphasized uh, since the pandemic, but we found that workers want to be proud of their work. We want to know that they've actually uh, or, or they have invested in their jobs right, beyond the day-to-day -day activities. And finally, they want to make sure that they're making a difference in the company. And some of the organizations that we're working with, interestingly enough, um, they are finding that that is more important than monetary benefits. Right. And so it's uh, 
quite interesting. And, and I think we're going to see more of that as the years go on. Yeah, it's such a great point. I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's so spot on. So as we dive a little bit deeper into these challenges and obstacles questions, right, and what we heard from these industry leaders across the board and in the survey results, we, we want to we're going to focus first on these top issues that are impacting marketing, right? We heard three primary things come out of, of that question. The top one is, as Nick previewed, the lack of integration across multiple point solutions, right? We'll talk a little bit more about this on the next slide as well, about how companies are investing in technology um, and ways that that is being coordinated or not across teams and some trends trends there. And then the second and third top issues impacting marketing were really about that, that data piece, right? Overlaying customer preference for communication on top of that first party data to build, to build trust, and then also adapting to the cookie list, the cookie list feature, right? How, how are we able to get that, that first party data to be able to continue to personalize and drive those experiences the way that we want and that we need as we, as we move forward? Very related from an integration standpoint, we actually see that at number two, when we shift over to the other side of the screen as, screen as to what people said were the greatest barriers to technology investment. The first was difficulty of implementation with a close follow on with that integration piece being, being the second one, um, difficulty migrating from vendors, and then also lack of technology talent also had fairly strong responses um, in terms of what is keeping companies, what is keeping marketing departments um, and organizations from really being able to invest in, in key areas to be able to drive the, the imperative of customer experience and also employee experience and orchestration to be able to provide that. So tying this back to the, the what we had just talked about on the previous slide about employees wanting to know that their work matters and how it is impacting the, the key outcomes of the organization, it becomes really hard to do that when there is that lack of integration across systems, right? But it's not just the systems. And this is something I wanted to underscore and kind of as I read through all of the different survey data, really stood out to me is that when we think integration, obviously we think we tend to think systems, right? And that is a critical part of integration, of being able to connect the data across systems to streamline workflows, um, to be able to report on exactly that, are these meeting key outcomes, are our actions meeting key outcomes for the organizations? But it's also about integrating people in process, right? What are we trying to achieve from the customer experience perspective? And how are all of our processes, how are our teams, how is our organizational structure organized to be able to deliver on that from a strategy point of view, from a process point of view, from a people and training point of view, right? What do I need to know about who our customers are? What do I need to know about what else they're receiving? How are we orchestrating this across the board? Um, and I think that that was, for, at least for me, was, was a key takeaway through all of this data was really hearing teams or hearing leaders come to the table saying, we need the we, integration to be better, but really what are the underlying implications of that um, from an overall organizational perspective? But Daniel, what's your yeah, thoughts? I was just gonna double click on, on that first item, the lack of integration. Um, kind of share a quick story. One of my favorite uh, customers here recently that I've had the opportunity to work with is the Home Depot. And interestingly enough, uh, they have really focused on their overall goal this year of being uh, customer needs, right? Not product, not category, not individual stores. It's all about the customer. And so we've recently announced a partnership with them and they're really leading the way in bridging the online and offline shopping experiences. And of course, that includes, as Nick mentioned, uh, you know, retail strategy, um, how the experience from an e-com perspective, their mobile app in-store uh, pickup, you know, from the lockers. And, and all these different touch points, um, it's really about the, the ability to provide comprehensive insights. And so you mentioned this earlier around data. And so it's important to, to kind of add that one on to people process and, and tech. What is our data model? How are we actually going to utilize that and to uh, really optimize our experience across all these different channels and ultimately uh, refine how our marketing investment uh, is actually going? And so ultimately that, that partnership is going to provide or deliver that view of the customer journey that, that Nick opened up with and ultimately support that enhanced omni-channel experience. And so we're pretty excited about that. What's more interesting is that they've actually been able to uh, deploy personalized experiences or campaigns uh, within 24 hours. They used to do that in seven to 10 days. And so it's uh, quite impressive uh, to underscore that um, where they started is around how they manage that work orchestration, right? From individual uh, strategy 
uh, all the way down to final delivery. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more here, I know, but uh, great example and, and always love to shine on the Home Depot. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And I think I think the point about data is a good one and also ties back to to the first kind of barrier that we heard from from the respondents as well around the difficulty of implementation, that if you're taking an integrations first mindset and a data first mindset to be able to orchestrate those customer journeys, implementations become in some cases more complex because of the complicated data models, like you said, that that do support some of this and that organizations are wanting to work toward building because they're being more intentional about, about the data that they need out of systems. I think sometimes that difficulty of implementation also comes in from as we as we work with teams, um, having not necessarily the clearest requirements of what they're trying to get out of that implementation, right? Of how does it connect to all of those other touch points? What is the role within the broader stack uh, with, which is actually a really nice segue into the, some of the questions and some of the data that we saw coming out of the survey around investment priorities, right? So we really broke up uh, the, the survey into three key questions around investment priorities. The first being related to how organizations are planning and prioritizing tech investments, which you'll see on one side of the screen. The second being on the status of technology budgets when compared to pre-COVID spending. And then the third, which we'll get to in just a moment, is, is focusing in more on, okay, what are those key technology investments that, that are being prioritized? So we'll get, we'll get to that in just a second. But one of the key findings here was that nearly 50% of organizations do not have a clear integrated technology strategy across the business, right? Which is allowing for misaligned investments. We, and we can see here, if we break that down a little bit further, about 51% have a clear integrated strategy across the business, but 44% still have different departments that invest according to their own strategies, right? And when, when that is coupled with what we see on the other side of the screen, that for the most part, understandably so, as tying back to what Nick said po during the pandemic, um, that budgets have increased, right? The imperative for digital customer experiences or Daniel, your experience, it, the example with Home Depot, hybrid customer experiences, right? Truly omni-channel experiences, it has only increased. The stakes are so much higher. Um, and with that, there is the recognition that there is a need to further invest in the technology to support this, that our new reality in these places are, are not going away. But when you pair these two things together, increases in spending with perhaps uh, um, the ability for siloed spending, it creates the opportunity um, for there to be more disconnected systems and they're ultimately potentially returning less value for the dollars spent, right? That not te more technology doesn't always mean more value if it is sent, sent in a way or invested in a way, implemented in a way that it's disconnected from the overall direction of the organization, what you're trying to achieve, or even in some cases, maybe working against those customer journeys that that you are trying to build across, across the different teams. Um, Daniel, how are you seeing this play out primarily within some of the teams that you're working with? Yeah, I think uh, if we focus just on strategy for a moment, um, as you know, strategy and execution can't be done in isolation. Uh, and unfortunately, we see that so commonly now, right? Um, the good news is that I think the pandemic has forced us, or forced CIOs, CMOs to work closer together. Um, and that's coupled with the transition to our distributed workforce, right? That's only amplified kind of the need to transform from a digital perspective and, and really how we work. Um, strategic planning has changed. Uh, the ability to plan iteratively is, is now a requirement. We kind of have to adapt to the market changes. Uh, and with that, I think it's interesting. Leaders oftentimes can clearly articulate their business strategy. The challenge is that it kind of goes one level below that, right? The, you know, often the organization's uh, senior leaderships uh, poorly translate that downstream. And so Ultimately, solutions are needed to help translate that down to the workers, the knowledge workers, those that are actually uh, executing the work. Um, on, on kind of the opposite side of the page here from an, an investment strategy, uh, I think it's you know, important for us to uh, kind of call out the fact that, that leaders right now are focusing on ways to be nimble, uh, ways to plan more effectively and focus uh, not only on the execution of work, but how are we actually setting forth those strategies how are we going to uh, support the need to pivot and ultimately um, you know, look at the different ways of working, right? Whether it's the, the creation aspect or delivery or, or ultimately how we're capturing value. We want to make sure that's 
uh, shared throughout the, the entire organization and not again in silos. One quick story, I'm working with a large retailer and you mentioned how you know, budgets are, are kind of siloed between divisions uh, or, or at least or, uh, groups within the organization. I'm even uh, seeing, even within marketing alone, you'll have uh, kind of a dichotomy between maybe uh, e-com and studio and, and digital channels where budgets are separate, right? So you're actually making decisions from a technology perspective uh, and even a data model perspective uh, within the same group uh, of marketing. So it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think that it'd be, I'd be interested in your perspective here too. I think some of the organizations that we work with that we, that I think have been addressing that, that this challenge the best have really been thinking in really holistic and comprehensive ways about governance, right? About how are we in taking that, it'd be like you said, it's kind of one layer down. How are we taking that overall business strategy and then getting the right people in the room so that we know where we can align even across our budgets, but we allow that flexibility to invest in the fringes, right? There are going to be specific solutions or capabilities that are needed within to, to perform specialized functions, right? And then, organizations that are doing this really well are creating cross-functional MarCom, MarTech governance groups that are really looking holistically across the board, which I, which I think is really, really exciting. Um, and the other thing that I, I would say here is that I think that the the disparate spending is is something that we see, well, actually, let me, let me respond, let you respond to that first, Daniel, and then I'll go down the other tangent. Yeah, it's challenging. And, and I think um, from an Adobe perspective, we focus on kind of unified uh, operational system of record, right? Um, and from a leadership perspective, we try to make it very simplistic to digest, right? Uh, how are we strategizing? How are we optimizing? How are we delivering, right? What are we doing to actually support um, uh, driving business outcomes? Uh, from an optimization perspective, how are we keeping teams productive? And from a delivery perspective, are we centralizing that? And so if you do that right, kind of that three-point equation, um, you, you certainly uh, can see some benefits um, from uh, kind of velocity of work, uh, the way that we're responding, the way that we're iteratively planning and prioritizing our work, and ultimately how we're uh, connecting the teams together. And so I, I think it's taking a step back from an organizational perspective, um, again, folding in that data uh, imperative and making sure that uh, we're focusing on, again, people, process, and tech, uh, and bringing that world together. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a, I'm actually just gonna keep right on going because that's such a, what you just said is such a beautiful segue into actually looking at what are investment priorities, right? So what we heard from the leaders that responded to the survey is that it really, that we see topping the list, the planning, project management and work management solutions, right? With 60% saying that that is the, the top top priority. Right behind that is business intelligence and analytics. And then as we get a little bit deeper, we start to get more into maybe some of the, more of those marketing, marketing automation functions. So the AI focus on marketing automation, digital asset management and content management solutions, uh, marketing automation and lead management, and then also campaign management and targeting solutions coming in there with the with the 35%. So when I saw this for the first time, I, I was, I was, I don't want to say I was surprised, but I, I was actually really happy <laughs> because I think it shows and reflects the, the recognition on behalf of organizations that you can't, that we can't have seamless customer experiences, as Nick said at the very beginning, unless we are attuned to those employee experiences, unless we are being thoughtful about how the work gets done, because otherwise it becomes the veneer, right? And what it takes up, it, what it takes to create those seamless customer experiences is Herculean at best, or at worst, just nearly impossible, right? If we aren't able to orchestrate in a meaningful, coordinated way internally, it just makes it so much harder to do what we know we need to do for customers. Um, so I thought that was really exciting. And, and no surprises here is that business um, intelligence and analytics and reporting was, was right behind it. I would have actually, if I had to guess, I would have guessed that this would have come in number one because of the frequency that we are hearing from teams, um, the need to be able to see this data, to make data-driven decisions, to make investment decisions that are based on data, to be able to share with sales, right? How is marketing impacting leads, impacting conversions, impacting revenue, right? That these questions are questions that the real, that teams are getting um, and having more and more pressure, I think, to, to share and be able to show and then also, of course, as we think about segmentation and orchestrating those journeys, that the data becomes incredibly critical to being able to, to orchestrate that. So 
Another thing that I think really stood out to me when I looked at this slide was that it also seems to match with the maturity curve, right? As we look at some of these, these items that are further down, um, campaign that maybe the targeting solutions or some of these um, marketing automation, it makes sense that some of the foundational pieces of work management and orchestration would be a top priority for critical future success before, because it's that foundation before we're able to fully leverage and maximize the value and the benefits that we're able to get out of a marketing automation or a lead management solution. Not to say that we shouldn't also be investing there. That's a critical part of being able to orchestrate all of this. Um, but I thought it was was really interesting. And the last, the last comment, and Daniel, I'll hold it, hand it back over to you, that I'll make on this slide is, is one of the primary call-outs here, really, from the data is that almost universally across categories, 75% plus of respondents had yet to make a significant investment um, across, across these technologies, right? So there is a need. People are identifying these areas, these software and solution um, areas as critical to future success. But even though in some cases to the prior slide, spending has gone up, we ha those haven't necessarily translated to those investment in some of these critical areas that stretch across teams, across people, across process to be able to deliver on some of those, those really large outcomes. Yeah, Jane, as you mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about number one, right? Uh, <laughs> the world that we live in. And, and so often we see uh, wasted effort, right? On misaligned work, redundancy, uh, rework from a creative perspective and a lot of disconnected uh, teams. Um, the inability to kind of see these outcomes and, and really tie back to strategy, uh, we're seeing that day in and day out. Um, I, I want to double click on the investment comment. Uh, we had a good question that came in around, um, have you seen a shift in budgets or optimism given the change in the economic environment? And maybe a, a variant of that question, Jen, would be where are you seeing additional investment for those uh, on the right hand side of the screen here? Yeah, really good question. I think that one of the, as we think about the changing environments, I think that, or the, our current environment, I guess I should say, we see that this top one continuing to be even more critical. One of the shifts that I know we've been seeing with clients and, and Daniel, I think, I mean, from conversations, I think that you're seeing things similar is that there's really the recognition that this needs to, that maybe there are pockets that are doing the planning well, but because it's not coordinated across the whole, there, there are gaps, right? So as maybe organizations are becoming more intentional about spending and about return on investment, really being able to eliminate <laughs> the gaps, eliminate the lag time, eliminate the kind of the drop balls or the clunky handoffs between teams and really bringing everyone together to orchestrate in one place. That's some, that, is a, that is a trend that we absolutely have been seeing. Oftentimes when we think about work management, I know we often see it starting with maybe creative uh, services, more in the, the design phase of the, of the overall marketing life cycle. We're seeing that expand upward into the campaign planning and marketing planning part, and then also downward into activation, right? How are we actually deploying and using something like a work front um, or a, some kind of project management solution to be able to actually orchestrate um, the deployment and the activation? And I think that's that's critical. And then directly tied to that from an investment standpoint, this business intelligence is incredibly important, right? As marketing departments are being asked more and more, like I said earlier about the about how is this actually contributing back to to leads, to revenue, to whatever it is that what the company is ultimately trying to achieve as a goal, having the ability to capture that data at multiple touch points in multiple different ways, right? Um, as we think about as we think about content marketing, it's not just a, a, a last touch attribution model that we need to be thinking about. We need to be thinking more holistically. How are we getting that data? How are we telling that story? I think that's and being more intentional with the dollars that we do have to invest. I think we're only going to see that continue to grow as an imperative. What are your thoughts here? We'll love to yeah, hear. I, I just want to echo on something you said earlier in terms of uh, those that are at the bottom of the list. I think I view personalization kind of a, a three-pronged approach here. You've got unified data from a, a single view of a customer. You've got the actual journey in real time in terms of orchestrating that journey and, and all the decision and automation that takes place. But there in the center, uh, you have to have some sort of enterprise content management and collaboration system, right? To really accelerate the content and kind of scale the personalization across all these different channels. And so that's why I think up top, we have that number one project management. You have to do that really well in order to kind of build your foundation to then achieve those goals around unification of data and, and 
basically being able to deploy these real time journeys. Yeah, this is such a great conversation. I'm going to I'm going to button here because I think um, <clears throat> I think the ability to do more with less and to truly hyper personalize are, are definitely what we're seeing a shift to. But I'm also seeing a really big shift where at the enterprise, they bought too much marketing technology. Mm. And so they bought a lot of different point solutions. And they now realize that not only is it difficult to integrate those point solutions or too many of those point solutions and then get to that unified data set and have people collaborate effectively across those systems, but it's also extremely costly. And in a potential bear market, the ability to do more with less um, certainly on the work side of it, Jen, as you highlight it, but also when we're diving in and we're looking at the technology stack and how much they have in duplicative and wasted technology that they don't need to have and how can we effectively rationalize that um, and get big time benefits in year two, three and four is, is something I've seen happen really, really quickly in a big shift in the marketplace just in the last three weeks. That's that's such a great insight, right? I think that's a really, really good point. And it speaks back to just the the ways in which these integrations are so important. And as one of the things that I didn't actually mention earlier that I was going to mention on the previous slide that I think ties to what you're saying, Nick, is that one of the things we've seen is we've seen an increase in assessments, right? Assessment engagements. And Daniel, I know that you guys are seeing the same thing. People Absolutely. wanting to understand their stack. Where where are those points of potential rationalization? Rationalization. Are we having the flows through at the right places? Are we really investing where we could be again to maximize value um, across the board? So I think it's a great call out. I'll throw one more thing on top of that too. It's now stemming well beyond marketing. So work management is is certainly big, especially in the Adobe space on the work in um, marketing. But if you take just marketing as an example, marketing um, aligns with and integrates with sales and HR, IT. And so what I'm seeing more than ever is Workfront um, has been for years a solution that serves more than marketing. But now enterprise organizations are looking at, well, geez, if we orchestrate journeys and we orchestrate work inside of marketing, what if we created common work frameworks so that we can perform and, and align work across all of the major functions in an organization. So finance is getting insight into the work uh, that they need, not only from marketing, but from IT and HR and all different areas. And then also all of the different um, you know, competencies and resource information that you have in HR. How do you use that inside of a, a marketing work management system to, to determine you know, what resources are you going to use when and where to drive velocity? tons of different enterprise benefits that are, um, you know, really surfacing more than ever. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, Nick, I'll, I'll add on to that as well. Um, as you were speaking, um, I couldn't help but think of Nordstrom, right? We, we uh, work very closely with Nordstrom and uh, as a, an organization, they're really committed to providing customers with ultimately the best possible service. Right? I think we've all shopped there. And something that's interesting that's taken place uh, that they were kind of bridging the gap between uh, marketing and IT and customer uh, support. And so through a particular integration, uh, their uh, customer support or customer solutions team, as they call it, um, they receive a ticket by a service now. And ultimately they wanna, again, focus on the customer needs through automation, they're able to take that ticket and automatically send that over to Workfront. And so the marketing team is able to pick up that particular issue, uh, create a workflow around that, and specifically kind of personalize how they uh, work to meet the needs of that particular customer. So it's a, a very simplistic uh, approach, but just the automation alone is saving many, many hours for the teams. And again, focusing on the customer and that personalization aspect, uh, they've been able to do some really cool things. I'll drive that nail a little bit further um, in the fact that more than ever, you know, well, first off, a customer journey doesn't end when a lead becomes a customer. And more than ever, I see customer support and customer service folding in as well. And if you think about it, um, that's part of, certainly part of the customer journey. But um, think about the analytics and insights you get from the customer mm -hmm. at that point as well. And then how do you feed that back into you know, the overall customer journey and analytics and so that you can improve it. Um, you know, been, been in this space for a long time and more than ever, I've seen that, you know, the tickets and the customer support being part of the, you know, enriched user profiles to make and activate marketing and sales channels that much better. Definitely. 
all said. Oh, this is great. That's fantastic. Oh, great. All right. So with an clock, I'm gonna, that was a fun slide. <laughs> with an eye on the clock, I'm going to move on to the next one, which is actually the last of kind of the deeper dive insights um, for that we're going to cover today. Definitely Paul and um, Nick will wrap with ways to learn more and to be able to access more of this to go a little bit deeper. But we wanted to, as part of the survey, of course, being Adobe and LeapPoint, we did want to ask how organizations like ours can help move the needle on some of these challenges, right? What what are companies looking for? What are marketing organizations looking for from tech technology partners and from implementation partners, consulting partners to, to help with some of these barriers, right? Again, what, what we see here is that one of the, and this is a direct quote from the survey, but our company has many disparate systems and we need them to talk to each other echoing the theme that we've heard through all of this, right? And I want to underscore what Nick just said of it's the, the statement here is our company, right? It's not our marketing department. It's not our creative services team. It's our company, uh, which again speaks to I, the way, the opportunity from an enterprise standpoint that this data shouldn't be siloed within one team, within a marketing department. Um, this information, these workflows, where it's more collaborative across teams, across locations, I think than ever before because of of the need to deliver on customer um, expectations. So I, we see that echoed here. But from a most important tech evaluation criteria, what, what people are really looking for that we heard from, from the survey results um, are compatibility and integration, no surprises there, um, ease of deployment and implementation, which echoes back to one of the top challenges that we saw, the top challenge being, being difficulty of implementation on earlier in the slides. Um, and then post ease of post deployment and ongoing management, the planning, I won't read through through all of these, but I think it echoes to the fact or kind of speaks to the fact that from a technology standpoint, organizations are looking for as close to plug and play as they can get, right? How quickly and easily can I get this into my stack and can I use this to start returning value to my business um, is really what, what clients want, which it can sometimes be a challenge when we're thinking about those deep integrations and connections um, with, and, and data passing back and forth between solutions, which I think directly then speaks to what we see from a consulting partner perspective, right? What they want from a consulting partner is the ability to support those integrations and that enablement, right? So they want it to be as easily able to come in, understandably so, into their system as possible. And then they recognize that that integration support is really where technology partners can, can come into play. Um, I do think it's very, it's again, I was super happy to see, but I also think it's what, absolutely what we are seeing and experiencing with clients across the board is that number two thing is the business strategy and planning. Right. It's not about let's just plug in another solution to what Nick said earlier about the rationalization. We want to be really intentional. Organizations are realizing, I should say, and have known in some cases for a while, the imperative of being so intentional about the technology solutions that they're bringing into their stack. And it's not just about where does it fit within the stack is where does this fit within my business? What am I trying to achieve? How are people going to use this? How many systems are people in on a day to day basis? What are they trying to accomplish? How are they orchestrating experiences? What experience do we want customers to have? Forget the tools that we're using to achieve it. What do we want them to experience? Um, and being able to help connect the dots between what that strategy is um, and then translate that into people, process, system, and data is really, I think, where we're seeing the, the need for those, those partner services um, as we move forward. Yeah, Jen, I can't uh, help but hone in on that word disparate. Uh, and one of my favorite customers, the FDA, uh, specifically the Center for Drug Evaluation uh, and Research, uh, they were using 64 disconnected systems to manage everything from intake to uh, approvals to uh, review and work execution. So um, we work with them to specifically deploy and first, to your point, uh, do a full assessment, right? Uh, we want to be consultative in our approach and understand what are, what are the outcomes that we're searching for. Uh, when we deployed a W Workfront, uh, we were able to consolidate those 64 down to four systems, right? And there were some requirements because of, of the compliance that was needed. Um, but, you know, so many different systems that creeped up over time, um, they really hadn't taken uh, kind of that bigger picture approach uh, with a partner to actually evaluate what was uh, at play. Uh, what were the processes at hand? Were there antiquated, were there broken processes? Uh, absolutely. And they kind of needed that handholding in order to uh, outline a strategy and, and ultimately consolidate those systems. We no, I love that. Yep. 
I couldn't agree more. We a very similar story. We have a financial services partner that we a client that we work with very closely. And we if, if, if some of this feels daunting, right, I think that this this client has done an, a wonderful job of t- tackling this in steps. Right. So one of the first steps was just to focus in on let's try to identify what our core systems are. Right. Let's think about our workflow. Let's map our end to end workflow at a high level. We're going to start high level, then we'll go deeper. And what are those core systems that go across it? Because the truth is, even if you aren't able to consolidate all the way down to four, like in that awesome example, right, you probably have four or five systems that are key to those underlying underlying capabilities that you need to have as an organization. Right. And then identifying what are truly the fringe and unique requirements that we need away from those four that we can fill in with other solutions that need be, right? But what can we get into those, what are those solutions that we're going to be committed to? Because that also helps shape your integrations roadmap, right? Okay, we know that these are the core systems that we are using to support our business. Great. We're going to focus on those integrations first so that we're investing in a way that's aligned with ultimately where where we're going and where we know we're going to be. Absolutely. I totally agree. Awesome. Great. Well, I know we only have a few minutes, so I'll start to wrap us up in the last few slides, if that makes sense. So we appreciate you taking the time with us today from the opportunities to the challenges that we covered, the challenges to the investments, the priorities to the expectations. Um, We covered a lot here today, but I think at the end of the day, the survey results to us were very clear, is that you're looking for an integrated strategy, technology, people process and work. And that will be how you innovate in the future to do more with less and be more effective and efficient in developing really powerful experiences and a great customer journey. Um, again, we appreciate you taking the time. We have a lot of content here for you, and that's, that's what we want to do. We want to be your source not only for the webinar but for additional content. So you have the ability to go and download, um, stemming from this, your industry-specific content as well. Additionally, we are doing a roadshow this summer with Adobe, and we'll be in three cities um, late summer early fall. We'll be in New York, Chicago, and LA. We'd love to see you in person. Um, We'll be covering a lot of these topics. We'll have a lot of our experts in every single city um, in multiple industries. So although it says New York City's financial services, which it is, that's the primary focus, we will have healthcare, we will have retail, um, we will have government, we'll have a bunch of representatives at, at every event that you can come and speak to. And we would love to see you in person. Um, If you're unable to see us in person, you can contact us. So if a lot of this, what we're sharing today resonates with you and you're thinking of your 2023 roadmap or you're thinking of specific initiatives that you have um, in the remainder of the year, we'd love to chat with you about it. Um, The easiest way to do it, just grab your phone right now. You could put a picture or as if you're going to take a picture, you could scan the QR code. That'll take you right to our contact form on your mobile device. Um, You can also go to leappoint.com forward slash contact. It's a very simple little form and you can engage with us. We'd love to speak with you and love to chat more about how we can help you. So thank you so much for your time today. Look forward to seeing you in one of those major cities. And if we have a minute or two, um, Daniel, I think we can, we can answer. one more. Absolutely. We had uh, just a few questions come in. Let me grab a few. Um, Let's start with uh, in terms of all the challenges that we talked about today. Where do you recommending uh, kind of customers to start, right? When their strategy is so disjointed, we talked about how oftentimes at the senior level, uh, it's pretty well articulated one level below, but then it goes completely disjointed. How do you approach that as an organization when you when you consult with brands? Yeah, I think um, so. I'm going to pass it to Jen, but I think you know starting with an assessment is the right way to go um, to figure out where you are and what things look like. But you know, ideally, what you're trying to do is take the strategy and be able to operationalize it and then tactically execute against it and demonstrate that the work, as we talked about way in the beginning, is really meaningful. And the only way it's meaningful at that tactical level is you know how it's driving the corporate strategy. Um, As a first step, Jet, this is Jen's expertise, so I I don't want to steal her thunder. Jen, do you you want to add on to what I shared or take it to the next level probably? (laughs) <laughs> no, not at all. I would, yeah, I would echo what you said. I think that this is partly why we're seeing the assessments so, so kind of ramping up because understanding what success means, like what your North Star is, is so critical for this, right? And it doesn't have to be, oh, this huge strategic effort. 
and no quick wins or value return for a year, right? Just the opposite. If you can quickly hone in on what some of those guardrails are, what those North Stars are, what success looks like for your organization, like I mentioned earlier, maybe what those core systems are with your overall workflow, it allows you to more smartly and prioritize those quick wins, right? Okay, great. Then within the construct of that, what are some pain points that are we know we need to fix today? What is something that's really manual? What is something where balls get dropped? Where is the biggest lag time in our process? Let's tackle that, but let's do it within the construct of knowing things like what is our desired customer experience? What are those core brand traits that we want to be chasing after? What does success look like for how we work together? Um, so that you can bring those things closer together over time and build that big picture roadmap while realizing value along the way. That's great. Maybe so one more question. Then, uh, when we, the work that we perform, we're aligning back to the, the strategy of why the organization is investing in that specific work and what they're trying to achieve, right? Exactly. Very much like okay. how how they're going to be investing in what it is that they're trying to achieve, whether it's on the experience side or the customer journey side. I think I was going to ask one more question then turn back over to you. We opened with that theme around integration and we had a good question that came in. Um, what tools or software should we start with, right? When you're working with organizations, where do you start? You, you speak of the, the North Star. Uh, we always kind of refer to that one level deep around North Star architecture. Are there certain systems that uh, maybe the audience could benefit from learning around uh, what what they should start with or prioritize or maybe uh, analyze? Yeah, I think um, that's a really great question. And, um, you know, if, if you're going to take it from a system perspective first, um, I think it all ties to the work. Everything that's happening is related to work, no matter what you're doing and what function of the organization or in what area of a function in the organization. So I think for us, when we think about, you know, app rationalization, establishing a digital foundation, accelerating that foundation, driving, driving true hyper personalization with amazing customer journeys and experiences, all of that requires work to be accomplished. And so if you want to take a, a technology focused perspective first, like Jen said, you know, it's about aligning the strategy and the work that's going to be conducted to, to get to those goals. So I would, I am a big proponent of starting with like a work front, a project management solution, work front well beyond the project management solution, but um, a work management system to, to really orchestrate everything in your marketing stack. And if you look at what we're doing for customers for the last five years, it is exactly that. Um, work front becomes the operational system of record um, for marketing in other areas of the organization but then it integrates and we've integrated over 150 different use cases and different technologies into Workfront to make sure that Workfront was truly driving the orchestration. That's great. Well, on behalf of uh, Adobe, thanks for having me, Nick and Jen. It's a great uh, discussion and, and really appreciate the survey. Back over to you. It was a pleasure, Daniel. Thank you to Adobe. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, and thank you, Paul, and the rest of the team. Really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody for joining today. Hope to see you in one of the cities and hear from you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.